Today, we are going to make a quilt from the new Go Bold book from Fabric Cafe. Hi everybody, it is April and I am in my craft room and I can't wait to make this new three yard quilt. So, this is the new book and the quilt that we are going to be making is called Amore and it is right here just in time for Valentine's Day. Now I can't give out cutting instructions because I don't own this pattern. So if you want this pattern, I will put a link in the description below where you can go find it. And let me show you the fabrics that I've chosen for this quilt. So here is a heart toss. This is an ombre pink and this is something that I don't know that I would have chosen but it matches the other fabrics so well and it was actually a little tough picking out these three fabrics. I'm kind of mixing up the way that your normal three yard quilt comes together. Normally I would pick this as fabric two and then the darkest fabric should be fabric three but I'm gonna flip them. So this will be fabric one, this will be my focus fabric. This will be fabric two, so this will be what you see behind the hearts. And then this will be fabric three, and that's what you'll see in the big blocks. Let's get busy cutting. things I want to share with you. When I cut up my strips and squares or whatever it is that the Fabric Cafe has me cutting out, I like to put a little sticky note that tells me which fabric I'm using. That way I don't forget because I have been known to get them mixed up. And you see these teeny tiny itty bitty squares? Yes, I am actually using a pattern that calls for those. Something else that I've discovered, and I can't believe I haven't discovered it prior to this. My June Taylor shape cut makes this cutting up a lot easier. I have subcut all of my strips into squares. So I've drawn a line on this square. So here I've sewn the corner. Trim one quarter inch from the stitch line, repeat on the opposite corner. Now here I've cut, it's probably more than a quarter of an inch, and what I'll do is I will press this back and that will make a snowball in one corner. And I want to do that on both corners. Right. So I need to mark all of my little squares and then take, let's see how many, and I'm going to make 24 of those. I'm going to take this to the sewing machine. I will take you with me so you can see how I'm going to chain piece and make this go really fast. I am using a water erasable marker. You shouldn't see this mark anyway, but if you did, when I wash the quilt, it will go away. So before we go on any further in the quilting of the bold quilt, Amore, I wanted to take the time to say thank you to some people and do some shout outs. Last week I had a little video recording issue. I didn't put a microphone on. So unless you could read lips, there was no sense in including that footage in the video. So let me do some shout outs. Anita Green, Thank you for that awesome advice on how to keep track of your devices. I'm going to uh, put that to good use. 
Renee Tanner, I am glad that you were able to supersize a project. I hope that you'll share it with me. I've got an email in the description below. Jeannie Clinton, hi from Kentucky. We miss you too. Sharon Rowling, I agree that quilt would make a great baby quilt. What colors were you going to use? And again, I hope you share it with me. I've got my email in the description below. Miller Quilter, thank you for that suggestion. I will try and remember to hold the fabric at an angle so that you can see what it looks like. Laris2328, that is an awesome idea. I love the idea of letting my grandkids use the markers or something on the block so that they have something special that they did on the blocks in their quilt. Definitely gonna use that one. Rivka from Florida, thank you so much for sharing your baby quilt. And you do such wonderful things. Thank you for watching my channel and for being such a good person. Donna Williams, I think it's awesome that you have your granddaughter interested in sewing at the age of four. You gotta get them early. Thank you guys for watching my channel. And I would like to thank some people for keeping me caffeinated. Julie, Lorraine, PJ, Beth, Nancy, and Paula G. Okay, back to sewing. So I have a stack of squares that look like this now. Step two, HST assembly. And in case you don't know what HST stands for, it is half square triangle. So here is fabric one, here is fabric two, and I'm going to do your typical create a half square triangle from two squares. So we have our two blocks that we're using. Doesn't matter which one you put on top. I'm going to put the white one on top because I'm going to be better able to see my marking. And I am again using a water erasable pen. So what you do with this tool is you have slits in the middle, which is where you mark. And you line up the corner of your square in this slit, and then the caddy corner corner you line up that square tip, and then you use the slits to put your marks. Now, you can leave it there and sew a quarter inch on either side. This tool, however, is exactly a quarter inch. So if you weren't comfortable with your being able to figure out a quarter inch on either side, you can mark on either side and then you have all the marks you need. This mark in the middle is where you're going to cut after you sew on these lines on either side. So let me mark up the rest of these and sew on either side of this line and I'll be back. So if you haven't done half square triangles before you can see how I am chain piecing them. I have this big, long chain of half square triangles. I've already sewn on one side of the line and now I am sewing on the other. All right, we are back from sewing our half square triangles. I've got a little pair of scissors, so you can see it's just a line of squares, and I have sewn on each side of the line in the middle. As you can see, I am just cutting these guys down that center line that I drew in the beginning. And what that does is it creates a half square triangle block. 
I almost forgot about my most awesome tool and it is called the Clearly Perfect Slotted Trimmer. And this helps you to make perfect half square triangles. So I am going to set my ruler on the seam line associated with the size block that I need and I'm going to put mine in the center. So I have a little bit of extra fabric hanging out on either side and I'm going to trim that. And I need to keep my ruler in place because I don't want to shift it because there's one more step. And now I'm going to rotate my ruler to make it easier for me to use these little slots. And what these slots do is they cut off the dog ears before you even press them. And there I have the perfect size block. We have our snowball cornered squares. That's just what I'm gonna call them. Then we have our half square triangles. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our snowball piece here and a half square triangle here. And we're going to sew these two together. So, unit assembly B. Then we're going to take these same two pieces of fabric, but instead of our half square triangle with fabric one and two being this way, we're going to turn it this way. And this is what we're going to create. And this is unit assembly C. Now what's really cool is when you put unit assembly B with unit assembly C, guess what you get? A heart! So that is how we are going to create our heart blocks. My heart blocks are done. So now we're going to go on to strip assembly B. And what we do with the strip assembly is we're supposed to take fabric three and then on either side of fabric three, we are going to sew fabric one. So we're using strips, thus the term strip assembly. Here we have our strip assembly B and we are going to measure and cut our strips. What we are going to do is we are going to take fabric one, the skinny strip, and we are going to put it on both sides of this strip assembly. That looks like this. Now we have multiple options on how to accomplish taking our block from this to this. We can cut fabric one strips in the length that we need in order to put it on the side and it be the right length and then we don't have to trim anything. We also have another option. We can take our strip by with the fabric, not trim it, and then just chain piece through with our blocks. So right now I'm going to a finger press just to show you how to do it. I don't need a big ruler. I'm just going to line up my ruler. Oh, Oliver's here just in time for me to trim. And I'm going to trim this side. 
and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. It would probably be easier and more accurate if I pressed first, but I'm just giving you an idea. So here we've got half of our block done. Then we will take another with the fabric strip of our fabric one and do the same thing to the other side. Okay, I have 12 heart blocks and 12 block blocks. So I'm going to put them up on the wall so we can see what this quilt is going to look like. is what the quilt will look like when it's all put together. Now, the pattern calls for a very thin border of fabric three. I kind of like fabric two, so I'm gonna put that over here. So let me know which one you like better. Do you like fabric three as the border or fabric two or both. Let me sew all these blocks together. I'll be back and I will show you the quilt. My quilt top is complete. I love the hearts. They are so cute. I really like the way it turned out. I ended up putting a white border around the main three yard quilt and then using the ombre pink all the way around it. I like it. Thank you for watching. I will put a link in the description below so that you can get a hold of this book so you can make some really cool looking quilts with it. Have a great day, eat some chocolate, and be kind to everyone. Until next time, bye. So of course, Valentine's Day always makes me think of candy. And I made homemade peanut clusters. And they're so good. Mm. Even if I do say so myself. Mm-hmm.